Let's start with Sunday night, the Indianapolis Colts, the Minnesota Vikings, the Vikes laying five, 46 and a half is the total. I say the Vikes get back on track. They've slipped a little bit. I think that we are among the masses who foretold a little slide there. The Vikings obviously weren't going to run a 14 and three type of number this season or anything. So they've regressed a little bit. I think they get right. Relatively speaking, Jordan Addison belly aching just a little bit on social media about his lack of involvement in the offense. They correct that. He goes over three and a half receptions plus 115 is your payout there. And of course the big story is Joe Flacco in fascinating stuff. It does kind of prove what I've what I've been saying now for a couple of seasons that maybe the offensive coordinator is more significant than the special guy you have under center or in shotgun more. Uh, a lot of teams are thriving by just having a trigger man in there. Ball hit your hands, get it back out. You're the savvy vet. You know where the ball's supposed to go. Operating that way versus trying to lean on special, like I say, athleticism to win the day. Hench, how say you here? Well, this is hysterical because six years ago, Joe Flacco was washed up. I mean, he was bad six years ago. Since then, hmm. he has been in four different locations where his washed up self has been better than the guy starting in front of him. It's so crazy uh, to your point, like merely knowing how to play the quarterback position, you know, makes you better than Deshaun Watson, better than Anthony Richardson. However, um, he he's, he's still not a top 25 quarterback. So I think this is a really nice get right game for, for Brian Flores, defense and the Vikings. I like them 24, 17. Yeah, and don't discount a, a town that doesn't get uh, a ton of uh, prime time games featured like this Sunday night football, the Vikings. I think that that means something in terms of atmosphere coming out of the gates. Spaghetti, how say you? Yep, obviously Flacco is the biggest story of this one. If Anthony Richardson was in, I'm taking the Vikings to win and to cover. But however, with, with Flacco in, I do think the Vikings will win this game. I do have the Colts, garbage time or whatever, getting within that five points uh, to cover the the spread here. I, you know, the Vikings are coming off a, a weird ending to that game. A lot of flags, and they missed the one that was the face mask. So how do they respond in this game? I'm interested to see that. Um, and again, Flacco, I mean, over 700 passing guards, seven touchdowns in only three games this year. This resurgence is is crazy. Uh, I'm not sure what the long term answer is for the Colts, but here and now, this is better for them, and they will cover this game. Super Bowl Fifty Five redo here, and um, I feel like, uh, or is it Redux? It's Redux, right? Super Bowl Fifty Five Redux, not a redo, because if it's a redo, they would play the game over from scratch. So it's a Redux. Anyhow, um, it is interesting that they are more and more, at least in my brain. Brady and Mahomes becoming mirror images in the way their careers kind of track here. Brady carried by the defense to victory over the Chiefs um, a few years back. Now Mahomes being carried to some degree, at least I think it's maybe a little overstated, but he is throwing some bad picks along the way there. New Hopkins now in KC, though, that figures to make a little bit of a difference. The Chiefs, here we go again. Big home favorite laying eight and a half in this one, 45 and a half is the total you know what i'm gonna go against everything we've talked about here i think it's the reverse of the patriots run when they went undefeated in the regular season which was they whip people in the first half of that season and then they barely were holding on week after week i think that the chiefs now have played this disinterested brand of ball it feels like for half a season and there they are undefeated nobody close to them um, it feels like at least um, by the time it all settles and who has the number one seed, it's going to run through Arrowhead. I say the Chiefs win this one by 10, 27-17. Sorry, Bucks. Kate Otten is walking through that door, and he's bringing nobody else with him. Um, Xavier Worthy, Jets sweeping all over the place. Um, Andy Reid still clever as all get out. I say Nuke is welcome to town in style, plus 155. That's a fun bet to make if he gets a touchdown there. Hench, how say you? Uh, exact same garage, Chiefs hmm. by 10. I got them 30 to 20. Um, you know, it, it, the other thing that the Chiefs are mirroring of the Patriots' 20-year run is, like, spectacular luck. Just, like, luck. Like, just, you know, unforced errors by the other team awarding you victories over and over and over again. And, and last Sunday, 
the Raiders get a, a an interception return like inside the three yard line, first and goal. You have one above average player on your offense. His name's Brock Bowers, and and no interest in trying to get him the ball. Like just we have one guy who can run into the end zone, box his guy out, and maybe get us a touchdown. The that play sequence by the Raiders is like. Yes, you you the Chiefs are are playing defense, but it's mostly the Raiders not playing offense that once again allows the Chiefs to not get scored on whatever. So luck, luck, luck. And then of course, you got this game on the schedule two weeks ago. This would have been a a, a game to pit, pick the Bucks money line. Now they're obviously devastated with with all those injuries. So once again, the Chiefs, you know, win and win and win. And this this tends to carry all the way through the Super Bowl. Like, you know, McCaffrey never fumbles. The Niners are going right down the field on the opening drive. Oh, McCaffrey fumbled. You know, it never happens. But anyway, so as you can tell, I, I'm as sick of the Chiefs as everyone must have been of, uh, of the Patriots while I was enjoying those two decades. Oh, we were. We were. This, this week, uh, they win again by 10. Um, and last week we told you Rashad White and Bucky Irving were the ones to lean on in terms of touchdowns and otherwise. Again, bad luck for for the Bucks. You don't want to be running up against uh, this Chiefs defense right now. Spaghetti, how say you? Yeah, going to be a tough matchup here. Um, I do have the Chiefs winning this game, but I do have the Buccaneers covering. I just think it's it's too big of a, a spread here. Baker Mayfield, you know, obviously this, the receivers losing Evans and Godwin um, were helping him become the number one, you know, uh, quarterback in the NFL with touchdown passes and number two in passing yards. But it's also because of Baker. Baker is, is playing very well. I mean, this guy has done a complete career resurgence. Not going to be maybe Hall of Fame type, you know, number one overall pick uh, numbers. But he's having a, an upper half of, you know, league uh, career right now. And I do think, uh, Shaq, you know, you mentioned like Bucky Irvin, who has like these Barry Sanders-esque kind of juke moves. Like the guy is lightning quick. And uh, I, I think there's enough there in that offense that'll keep them with it. I also think, too, the Chiefs with this game, outside of this game, they have maybe three more games this year where it's like hey they could lose like they have the texans they have the Steelers, uh and they have the bills outside of that they have a bunch of cupcake games obviously they, they could you know sleepwalk and they could lose one but th there's a real chance now after, and this game got a whole heck of a lot easier with no god with no evans um the chiefs have a real shot maybe of going undefeated if they choose to uh i also think too this game you know 5 20 kickoff la time before the clock hits six o'clock for us. I, I think myself or Hench will already text how bad these calls are. Chiefs in prime time. I thought like we're going to see a lot of bad calls kind of in their favor. I hate bringing this up, but I, I think all this amounts to a Chiefs win and a kind of come from behind uh, late, late uh, cover uh, here by the Bucks, Baker and the Bucks. So uh, Bucks lose. We're having a good season, but uh, Chiefs will come on top. I don't know if we'll still be talking about a good season for them. It's oh, the injury though. Obviously they were pointed in the right direction until they fell apart in terms of uh, getting dinged with their big time pass catchers. Next up, it's the Broncos in charm city, a redo of that, uh, that classic Joe Flacco deep shot over Raheem Moore. You remember how that all went, but this one is on the other side of football America. The Ravens are laying nine 45 and a half is the total. I'm going to say that the Ravens, the Broncos, let me point out this first of all. The Broncos have won five of six, um, five of their last six, and that one loss that they had was by seven uh, within that uh, six-game stretch. The Ravens have won five games, um, and only twice has the margin been as big as nine, has, has been, I'm sorry, has even been as big as seven. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm muddled with my explanation here. There's no indication, in other words, long story short, that the Ravens are going to hammer the Broncos. They may beat them. I think they will. 27 to 19. Hench, how say you? Well, it's interesting. The the Ravens, the 2000 Ravens average allowed 10.3 points per game. The 2024 Ravens are allowing 12 points a game in the fourth quarter. Wow. It's so crazy how, I mean, they cannot finish a game they 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 collapse in the fourth quarter and obviously Kyle Hamilton's drop leading directly I, I mean I think it's that you know we can talk about Aaron Judge Aaron Judge's drop like catching a football is easy. I've moved like, on come yeah, on I man mean, I, I cool. mean when you I mean like uh, uh, even though Aaron Judge makes that play 999 times out of a thousand if you 
if you actually have to catch a sinking line drive as a, a baseball, as opposed to a floated football with both arms, like no one around you, that Kyle Hamilton drop worse than Saquon's earlier in the season against the Falcons, worst drop of the year. Um, but the Ravens do something stupid every week and they have the only kicker in football who can't make a 50 yard field goal. I mean, we are so deep into the upside down with Justin Tucker, like taught, like we just thought he was a robot. He, you know, kickers are, are, uh, are prone to, to the mind games and like his brain is broken. He he's cause he knows he's the only guy who's not making them all. Everyone else is making them all. Justin Tucker with another huge miss last week. All that said, this is this is a this is a, a perfect get right game for the Ravens. There's there's no way um, that Bo Nix hands with this hangs with this team. I've got it 33-14. I hear you, and I know it was just the Carolina Panthers that he vanquished last week. But it is funny that as uh, the the football fans on the banks of the Three Rivers rejoice um about russell wilson it's funny that sean payton didn't want him and you thought and, and in a vacuum you would say sean payton qb whisper boy he blew it there except that bo Nix does look good and so it seems like he was right too hopefully uh it works out for both sides eddie spaghetti how say you on this one i have a similar score to hench i think this is a perfect get right game for the, the ravens uh to come back home we kind of felt you know the browns would get that little boost from the the Jameis experiment there and they won that game i mean we're talking about the margin of victory for the ravens their their margin of losses is only 15 points in the three games and all their victories have come you know two teams either we thought were going to be really really good but still above average teams i think cowboys bills Bengals, commies uh bucks like they, they have a tough schedule and they're just finding ways to win and we all know what could have happened week one uh with isaiah likely's a toe tap there losing that game by seven points which is their you know largest margin of uh of losing a game here i also think adding deontay johnson yeah in the fantasy world is probably frustrating for those who have mark andrews or likely um or or zay flowers but i think just in in real football terms you know having another receiver you have to respect and cover out there with how good king henry's been obviously lamar could run too i think it really helps the ravens offense and and this team is you know they have three losses but all very very close uh this 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 team is for real and like after that that bad loss last week i think this is a perfect game for them to come and just at home and just totally destroy the broncos so i had the ravens winning big somebody told you and it was me uh, spoiler alert it was me who told you that that offensive line in baltimore was not up to the raven standards and neither was the pass defense and both continually um are pr both of those uh statements are being proven correct pretty much every week this five and three ravens team i don't know what they have to do to make people say that they're flawed a little bit everybody just keeps wanting to shove them past the chiefs and into the super bowl we'll see if it happens the other one people want to do that with is the bills because of josh allen they're hosting tua and company up in western new york for uh the uh the bills are laying six 49 and a half is the total i say the bills get it and cover 28 21 Tyree kill plus 155 to get a touchdown. I think that uh, he and Tua um, reclaim their uh, their uh, relationship. Four touchdowns in his last three games. James Cook, um, too good now, a touchdown bet because he's minus 175 to get one. Instead, go with him to have over 100 combined rush and receiving yards. That's a better payout for you. Hench, how say you? You know, this was obviously this was a much better game on the schedule in late August than it seems to be now. That said, I feel like if you're the Bills, you don't want to play the nothing to lose. The, the team whose season's, you know, sort of over. Uh, hey, but I, if the Dolphins would have held on against your cards I, last I, week, I then know. they're in, then it's like I know. this game, they can still steal this division. But, uh, but now, I, now I think uh, so. I don't think they steal this game, but I I think the backdoor cover is in play. Maybe that maybe that touchdown to Tyreek at the end is what makes it 27-24 uh, Bills final. Spaghetti. Yeah, I have the Bills winning this game and covering. I have them winning, you know, by touchdown at least here. And I totally agree with Hench. It's kind of the wind's kind of taken out of the sails here because you wanted the, the two of versus Josh Allen. Uh, what is Tyreek Hill going to do? I feel like they're not completely right yet. 
and the Bills aren't a team, especially on the road going to Buffalo. You don't get right in those kind of games. I wish they had had kind of a buffer before they had to play a tougher in division game here. Um, I, I think this this talk about flawed rosters. I I just think that the Dolphins are missing some stuff, and the Bills are completely flawed. We've talked about this on this show. That is kind of Josh Allen hero ball. But Josh Allen hero ball when he's playing having MVP type season, it works, and uh, they're, they're going to win this game on the backs of him. Next up, commies, gents, New Jersey. The Giants, plus three and a half at home, 43 and a half is the total. I have to say very quickly, Eddie Spaghetti coming off of Monday Night Football. Mm. I know you and New York City uh, sports fans had a tough choice to make. You had the Giants and the Yankees. That's why I think it was really cool, the Buccos, not to make the World Series. The Pirates gave way to the to the Steelers. They gave them the floor all on their own. Yeah. The, the Steelers almost pooped on that floor in front of a national audience. No surprise. Every game has to be a, has to um, be a white knuckler. If you're a Steelers fan, I think ultimately probably it's good for the giants that they don't win that game. I think the vibes are good. It just is a matter of getting from here to the end of the season in good health. I think there's, there will be cause for real optimism there. You saw Tracy banging around all night there. Um, against the allegedly dynamite Steelers defense. This is now too many games in a row where they're being run on by people. Um, and Malik neighbors certainly looks like the real deal. The margin of victory there was a punt return. Otherwise, you know, I, and if Tracy doesn't get knocked out cold in that one, I don't know how that game winds up. Anyhow, rear view mirror stuff. I say the commies get this one fresh off the hail Mary and all of that. 23, 18, Brian Robinson seeding some touches to Austin Eckler of late. He gets in the end zone, even money. If he does, um, Darius Slayton, they continue to show him off for, um, trade suitors out there. I think he goes over three and a half receptions pay out there. Plus one forty. Hench, I'll say you. Well, this is a matchup between the beneficiary of the worst play call of the season the handoff at the goal line by the bears to the backup center that that will that will not be surpassed that that is that's maybe the worst play call of our lifetime that you're going to in a one score game you're going to give it you're actually going to give it to the backup center this isn't the lions uh getting the offensive line involved up by 40 this is you're losing and and you lose you know the hail mary hail marys happen that happens. There, there's an element of luck to that. Uh, it, you know, you, you sort of make your own luck if you're taunting the fans while the ball's in the air. But um, but the handoff to the center doesn't have to happen. That's all on you. That's just terrible. Uh, the, the second worst play call of the season, that Giants two-point conversion. Like, we're still... We're still trying to figure out. Like <laughs> we don't even know what was the plan. Did they ask Dimes what he was so I, hot about? Like who was, was he specifically angry they, with on that? Uh, but what happened was uh, apparently that play was something they executed like perfectly all the time in practice, and then they had to like rush the setup of that one. They just didn't execute it correctly. Uh, so Danny was very upset. Well, rightly oh, so. Anyway, in the matchup of the beneficiary of the of the worst play call and the executor of the second worst play call, I think the commies cover this one. Jaden Daniels obviously looks right. 27-19. Spaghetti. Yeah, I mean, they had the chance to beat the Commanders earlier on in the season. That's kind of the theme of this giant season is you had a bunch of games you could have won. They could have beat the Cowboys as well. They could have beat the Bengals as well. Shaq, you're talking about the Steelers game. I actually think that was a little bit further apart than those other games because those other games literally had one play or a healthy kicker and it would have flipped, you know, reverse. And the Giants are now near the top of the uh, the division here. And it's the worst case scenario for the Giants as well to play a guy that's going to haunt you for the next how many years J uh, Dayton Downs is in a, a Washington Commanders uniform. This is a guy that in the hard you can just watch the wanted. Eagles. Oh, wait, they have Saquon. Wait, that doesn't help. Exactly. Anyway, so, continue with your thought. So I, I, I could spend an hour ripping apart the Giants, but I won't here. I, I think we're finally at the boiling point of after, what is this now, six seasons of Daniel Jones, where the, the almost and the, the so closest, they don't matter anymore. Like, he's now in jeopardy of being benched for good and just never playing as an NFL starter again. I think that's unfortunately where it goes. He's everything you want about a quarterback with the physical stature, the mental makeup. He just does not have the talent. It's plain and simple. Um, so uh, obviously they're going to come in here. The commanders are uh, into MetLife, the dejected, New York sports fans are going to have to watch another bad loss. They're going to win this game. They're going to cover. That team scores points. He, Deontay Banks is making sloppy, lazy plays. He's like walking up the field as well. A um, lot of mess going on in this Giants team right now. Not very good. And the worst part is 
they may not even get a top pick and they still may not even get their guy at quarterback in what people are calling a bad quarterback draft class. So it's great. I, I'm looking forward to having the fourth best quarterback with the ninth pick uh, in this draft class. So another brutal loss in division. So uh, Tommy's win. listen, Shadur Sanders is going to be there when you draft third or fourth overall, I think maybe he won't be. Um, but to answer your question, it was before spaghetti walked the planet earth, but I think the worst call I've seen in a pro football game is the same team. The giants were talking about, why did they try to hand off with Joe Pasarczyk to, to Larry Zonka? Why didn't he just take a knee? We never hear that discussion. What the hell was going on there? Why didn't you just why didn't you just, just kneel it down there, Joe? What was the point of handing the ball off in that spot? Anywho, stay in the division with the Dallas Cowboys. They're traveling to Hot Atlanta. The Falcons, my Falcons, laying three in this one. 52 is the total. Luckiest team in football, says Kevin Hench. They were lucky again against the undermanned Buccaneers. They survived that one. Telling you, a number one seed in the NFC is in play. The NFC North teams are going to beat each other up along the way here, and it's going to get worse, and the Falcons have a chance to rise up above everybody else. Falcons win this one, 29-24. Jake Ferguson has had at least six receptions in four of his last five. He goes over five and a half here. Kirk's good for two touchdown passes, I suspect. And a fun bet for you, the Atlanta defense or special teams in large part because of Dak Prescott and the special teams of the Cowboys allow a touchdown one way or the other. Five to one is your juicy payout on that one. Hench, I'll say you. Uh, you know, it was, it was wild watching that game against the Niners because, you know, good Dak and bad Dak were just taking turns, you know. <laughs> you know, Dak just horrible throws to the other team, followed by, you know, dimes to a, a, an uncovered C.D. Lamb. Uh, I think a big a, a big limitation with, with that the, the Cowboys in that game was they're literally – having an old timers game going on in the backfield with Zeke and Dalvin cook. Like these, these can't be your running backs in 2024, like Zeke and Dalvin cook because Rico Dowdell was, was sick before the game. Dowdell's actually a nice player. And I don't, you know, I am not sold on this Falcons defense at all. And I think if the Cowboys have any balance whatsoever, they are going to move the ball against the Falcons. I think this is a big Dak game. And I think the Cowboys win it outright. 30 to 24. Hmm. Eddie Spaghetti. Uh, I actually have the Falcons uh, winning this game at, at home and covering here. Uh, a large reason why is, you know, Kyle Pitts, uh, say what you want about the early parts of his career, but he actually has come on as of late. Maybe Kirk Cousins kind of unlocked him uh, in, a, in a strange way, and they have a bunch of other weapons too that I, I just don't think the Cowboys could be able to, to cover. The Cowboys are too up and down this year, and I just feel like the, the morale after all the stories that come out and losing to another, you know, one of your rivals in the 49ers, and they, they just don't have the – the correct mental makeup, uh, I, I think, as a team. And when their offense seemingly is just one thing, which is Dak, two seeding Lamb, obviously, if I know this, the Falcons defense knows this, they're going to be able to try to cover that. Uh, I, I just think Kirk Cousins in a perfect environment right now. And I, I like this Falcons offense, whose job to win the NFC South just got a little bit easier, obviously, with all the injuries to the Buccaneers. So I think they're going to win this game. I, I do feel obliged to say there's no Micah Parsons out there and it doesn't sound like he's tracking to play this week again. I, you know, but then again, the Niners don't have CMC and mm -hmm. they don't have uh, a lot of their guys too. And they were on the same field with the Cowboys and, and uh, they came out with the W next up Peterson bowl. It's the Jags. It's the Eagles Philly at home laying seven and a half 45 and a half is the total I like the way Philly's coming together now. Jalen Hurts in particular is starting to look more like he did at his best. He's running the ball very well now. 33-23 is your final. A.J. Brown, a consistent five-catch, 80-plus yard receiver. He'll go over 90 in this one, and your payout is plus 145 there. Like I say, Hurts running the ball well. Five rushing touchdowns in just the last two games. He's still even money to get one here. I like that action. How say you, Hench? I'm right there in your garage, Sheck. Uh, Eagles 31, Jags 20. Jags pretty banged up. Really, we, you know, lo losing Christian Kirk for the season. Um, they weren't good before they started getting banged up. They're worse now. And uh, and the Eagles are starting to have that look of a really well-balanced freight train, moving the ball, putting up big numbers. So uh, I don't see any way the Jags hang with them.
Well, a consistent theme for the Jags this season has been everybody throws on them. There's no reason you shouldn't Mm -hmm. expect uh, Hertz to be able to do that with his collection of weapons. Spaghetti. Exactly that. Um, We we know all the the Jags stats, you know, the deep pass defense has been awful. I think Jalen Hurts is a much easier time there. Don't forget Saquon still behind him. Credit to the Eagles, too. We were crushing him on this show. um, And, you know, seeing Sirianni make those weird statements, bringing his kids to the press conference, and they kind of weather that storm. They they kind of figured things out. They're they're looking better here in the Jaguars. Whereas like bring it up, even though I don't want to bring it up, I bring it up every show that I was uh, very much into them. And, you know, they just do enough to kind of get away from the Trevor Lawrence's a bus conversation, had a nice game, especially to Brian Thomas. That connection seems to be working, but the Jags are not a very good team at all. And I think the Eagles are kind of figuring it out at the, you know, a good time for them. So Eagles win and cover big. All right, on to what I consider to be the main event game of week nine here. Like I say, the NFC North teams are going to start cannibalizing each other. Here's a good example of that. It's the Detroit Lions and the Green Bay Packers in Lambeau. The Packers plus three and a half at home, 48 and a half is the total. The Lions go in there and leave with a victory, 31 to 26. The game of attrition owed to injury and suspension. You know, Aiden Hutchinson is down. Uh, Jamison Williams is now on the shelf for a couple of games at least. Jair Alexander doesn't sound like he's going to be out there for the Packers. I think that all adds up to increased targets for some of the other Lions pass catchers. They are an offensive machine. Sam Laporta over three and a half receptions. Tim Patrick touchdown plus 330. Somebody has to get those targets. I say it'll be Patrick. Hench, how say you? Uh, Yeah, the game of the week for sure. You know, whenever a team has all of the miscellaneous stuff go its way, like the Lions did last week, putting up putting up 52 points on, you know, 90 yards passing, which is a bizarre box score to look at because everything went their way against a really terrible team. Uh, Those things level out a little bit. And I just don't think the the Lions are going to sort of catch every break against a pretty darn good Packers team. I think Jordan Love does play. That seems to be the, the, the word on the street. And I think they keep it close. I think the Lions win, but don't cover 27, 26. Spaghetti. Yeah, this game is the toughest one for me, at least to pick. And I just kept kind of see information on Jordan Love. Didn't practice Wednesday. I know it's a groin strain. Is it that important? I think it is in terms of his mobility and his dropbacks, him pressing into throws. Um, I just the, the lines are just too good right now to have your quarterback, the opposing quarterback, not be playing, not practicing. Uh, I, I think just because of that and the smallest spread, uh, I am going to take the lines. The lines offense is just so potent right now. And I, I do think that it may not be Matt. Max Crosby, if they do get somebody kind of filling that Aiden Hutchinson spot, uh, it's going to be smooth sailing for them. I also weirdly think if the season ended right now, I would probably pick the Lions if we had to do a playoff bracket like today. Like I would have the Lions winning the entire thing, I think, o- over the Chiefs even. Um, so right now they are hot. And they're playing very, very well. I do love the Packers, but I just think it's a really bad week for Jordan Love to be missing time. I know the last decade has kind of offset a lot of the history, the Super Bowl era um, info that you might lean on, but I still do think maybe I'm just an old curmudgeon. I don't think the teams that just overwhelm you week after week, that bludgeon their foes offensively, those teams don't tend to um, dominate on that level come January. And so the Lions, I, I am skeptical of their ability Obviously, there's time for them to maybe get a, another pass rusher. Um, but Aiden Hutchinson is a major absence for them. Um, still, obviously, not going to fight you too hard on the Lions being the NFC Super Bowl rep when it comes time for that in, in February. Next up, the Rams, my preseason pick to win the NFC West, are back in there. The other three teams are ahead of them, though, all at 500. The Rams at three and four. The Seahawks, plus one and a half in Seattle to host these Rams 48 is your total. I think the Rams win it 27 to 24 Puka back over five and a half receptions um, is the play there on the other side of things. Cooper cup, even money. If he goes under five and a half receptions, I kind of think that's where it's tracking. Obviously they had his name on the trade market uh, uh, just a week ago. Mike McDonald says DK Metcalf should be out there. That is a big help against a pretty soft Ram secondary. Not enough, though, to um, to stop the Rams from uh, from going up there and winning the game. Hench, I'll say you. 
we we are just parking in the same garage huh. you know, on all these games. I you know I, when you watch the Rams, especially when they're when they're undermanned, I think you get a real sense for how good McVeigh is. Like you know when they're you're like, who are they throwing to? When they get healthy, they're just good. And so the Rams obviously health wise trending in the right direction. DK may be playing. I tell you, as a guy who has him in both my fantasy leagues. He vanishes for long stretches of games. Then he catches the ball and he leads the league and fumbles by a wide receiver, drops, fumbles. Like I'm just like DK should be uncoverable and he and he's not. I mean, he's just like he just doesn't he doesn't dominate the way he should. Whereas Puka and Cooper, two guys who shouldn't dominate when when you look at when you look at the physical tools that that the two of them together. Kyron Williams in the backfield, Stafford spreading it around. I like the Rams to put up a big number here. I like them 30 to 24. Hmm. Spaghetti. Similar score to Hench here. I have the Rams winning. This is a crucial in division game here. And, and I just do think that the health of the Rams now obviously helps them with mismatches there. And I do think DK did not practice uh, on Wednesday. They say he's trending the right direction, but, you know, still again, missing time. The biggest thing for me, why I'm taking the Rams in this game, and I'm shocked by this is the Seahawks have what I think is probably the best home field advantage. They lost their last three games at home. Giants, Niners, and the Bills just came and stomped them. So if you don't have that, what do you really have here? Uh, I just think the Rams offense, I think there is uh, something to be said about the morale, the mood, getting back those two receivers, and, and Stafford we know is tough as nails. Um, they know how important this game is in a division where everyone has like the same exact record. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm taking the Rams, with, you know, beating the Seahawks and covering because no home field advantage up in the, the PNW.